earlier, I did one of France, and now I'm doing one of Italy. I'd say my second favorite country, or both of those are my favorite countries uh, to visit, <laughs> if that makes sense. I can't, it's hard to really rank them, though I've definitely spent more time in Italy. Um, been to France a few times, but you know, just a, a week or so at a time vacationing, whereas Italy actually lived there for like four months. I guess if you can call that living there. <clears throat> this particular scene I'm going to do today is from uh, last time I visited in Milan, which was like two years ago. Maybe three years ago at this point, jeez. Back in 02, or was it 03? I can't remember. It's funny how you start to sound like an old person when you can't remember how long ago something happened. And everyone around you is saying, it doesn't matter, just get at the friggin' point. So I was in Milan. Have uh, some friends there. So whenever I go visit Italy, I really need to stop in Milan. And plus, it's super. Uh, it's it's easy to fly into that airport. Okay, just checking the stream. Make sure the stream is on. The chat is working. So I'm back again, guys. Thanks for joining me. <clears throat> I'm gonna be working on this fun little Milan trolley scene. Going to start with... Most of this painting is very dark. There's really two shapes. There's the dark silhouettes of the buildings and a sliver of light that's coming out through. A sort of sliver of cool light. And I want some ultramarine blue. So I got my acrylic paint back out again. This is an acrylic underpainting that I've started. This panel literally is just some spare honk of panel. I keep these around uh, to test things on, whatever. And then sometimes I just smear a bunch of extra paint on them when I'm done with a painting. I got extra paint on the palette. Instead of scraping it off and throwing it away, sometimes I'll just real quick uh, smear it onto a spare. So this panel, I was testing out, I don't know specifically what pieces those were. I did a, a couple of large figure paintings with this great damask pattern in the background. And I was testing out, my, I, I custom made a stencil for that particular purpose. And uh, that's where this came from. So I can just cover it with some extra paint. And... Uh, Next thing you know, it can be a painting. <clears throat> okay, that's going to dry. See, this underpainting is totally dry, so I can push and pull the paint around as I want. Maybe that's going to be like a little sign right there. And this will need to dry a little bit. I want this whole thing to be kind of sort of a dark bluish purple so I'm going to start filling that in now there's a whole lot of brown going on in this in this color in this underpainting so far that is not what the painting is going to be like it's going to be much more blue so I'm going to start filling in now it's like an early morning this was a beautiful time of day to explore the city Real early morning, there was nobody up yet. You know, people are just like going to work. There's no tourists out. Um, really a cool time to see the city. Uh, my friends who we were staying with, they uh, live just a couple train stops away from the Duomo area. So it was easy, you know, we were jet lagged, got up real early and uh, 
took the train down to the, the Duomo and it was so early there was no one else out yet so that was really a cool time to see everything and I got my trusty heat gun I'm gonna let these dry in between <clears throat> this is a great tool for blasting it with some heat and evaporating all that water and you can see all that great texture that's still underneath and uh, I can I can add transparent layers of paint on there and it won't disturb that texture at all how's it going again Matt good to see you we're on for round two of painting today so this dries pretty fast when I do this yeah this is just abstract great fun random texture This paint can be a little shiny, so sometimes it's hard to tell when it's actually dry. We're going to hit that light again. I got a great studio with walls that I can just flame paint on. What's a studio if you can't make a total mess in it, right? Here's some more light, and I want it to be a little more blue up here. As I layer this on there, I want it to be a little more color, and I can add a lighter value as needed. And I can soften these. Um, let's say I want to do a little bit more. some other softer brushes over here so I can like define this a little better if I want now that will happen way more when I start doing the oil paint well for now it's cool to hit it with a little bit and even now I can start to fudge in a little bit. Some of this distant light, the way it fades away, I can sort of blend it in. With acrylic, it dries so fast, you only get a couple seconds sometimes. That's all right, that's all I need. So there's the distance. Uh, hi Juliana. <clears throat> uh, I'll bring back the other, the other one that's finished later. Um, I'll bring that one back out and show it. <clears throat> Let's say this needs to be a little more blue here. I can add a touch of white into it just to lighten that value up otherwise these pigments are a little too dark for the moment yeah this is a very early morning blue kind of piece kind of contrasting the the great golden afternoon kind of piece that i just did if you were watching that one i'll bring it back out later and show you guys for who's ever new. Again, I want this to be more blue. So these great bits of brown are going to help layer this piece and add some cool colors and stuff that I, you know, wasn't expecting. So there we go. That's fun. 
maybe a touch more green, kind of. Look at all that juicy texture underneath there. Yeah, it's great. So it's almost like a bluish, purplish, greenish. There's so many things happening here. And once again, hit it. If I don't hit it with the with the, if I don't let it dry, hit it with the air gun here, the heat gun. I'm just pushing around wet paint, and acrylic dries fast enough where it'll like skin over. And then if I hit it again, it'll peel off that paint entirely. So I do like to let it dry in between. And then I, you always got to squint. I'm doing this. I'm not falling asleep. I'm just uh, squinting at my subject. So it really reduces it down to a handful of values and can really let you see what's going on. <clears throat> Oh, hey, Mike. Oh, glad you got your Metalog print. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, yeah, cool. Hope you guys are doing well. I feel like I want to go on, like, a, a restaurant tour once all the restaurants are officially open back up. I've been doing takeout when I can from some close places, but uh, I feel like I want to get all my friends together and, like, go on a super mega Denver restaurant tour to, like, help support all the restaurants and bring you guys back to life, you know? <clears throat> okay. Um, let's do this one again. I guess I can still do this. There's too much water on it. That's too light. This is by far the lightest part of the whole painting. So I really want it to be. And so when I hit this with oil later, it'll, it'll have a nice light foundation underneath it to support how light I want this to get. If I put white paint right there, it'll still look transparent and, you know, You'll see this dark through. It'll be dull. It won't be like the bright, intense that I want. Um, okay, well, that's drying for a second. I'm going to start to sketch in where the trolley is going to be. <clears throat> uh, hi there, Wendy. Thanks for watching. Um, okay. Yeah, this... Where is that? Like there to about where there. Something like that. I could probably go a little higher with these some of these buildings up here too. Now we'll define more of those later. Oh, got a little smidge of some super bright green there. That's okay. Okay, trolley's there. I lost my center mark. I do a little grid with dots just to sort of mark out where everything is. <clears throat> There's the edge of that. Of the trolley and the bottom is right here. That's the very top roof and then here. Yeah, I'm not going to paint this too much. I just need to sort of poke around and show where it might be. And there's a headlight right there. So you can almost kind of tell that's a little trolley right now. 
Um, Regina says, I'm painting from a picture. Uh, yeah, there's a picture that I took of Milan that I'm looking at here. Although, um, I'm not re recreating the picture. I'm using the picture to, to remind me what it looked like. But as an artist, I'm the one who has to, re to show you what it felt like, which the camera doesn't show. That's where the camera falls short. The camera shows you what it looked like, but it fails by far to show you what it felt like. And that's what I have to do. I'm trying to add all the movement and light and, and emotion and feeling that, uh, that a camera just will never ever capture. Here's some more buildings. I can sort of iron those out a little more specifically a couple signs and stuff. Oh, I love Europe. I love the style of their building. I love it. It's, it's, it's got so much age and history <clears throat> and culture, you know, and heritage and Here's a little more light for some of that stuff there. See, it already you can tell it's going to be this alleyway street sort of disappearing into the distance. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of people right here, so we won't be able to see a lot of this. But it's, there's a sidewalk that happens right there, and I need to indicate just for myself. This is where this sidewalk is. It's kind of some perspective lines, I guess, I need to start doing. I'm just eyeballing these. If this were a bigger painting, I would probably get out a ruler. But I'm just eyeballing this. small enough where I can just sort of, yeah, that's it, close enough. And plus, a lot of these perspective lines change because the buildings are not parallel. They, they turn and they move. But I'm just trying to place where they might be. Yeah, definitely a little lower. See, it looks like a little scene already. You can start to feel what it looks like. It, the, the forms are starting to make sense. Let's see, that's... I feel like this actually might come over just a little more. A little bigger. We're looking at this trolley from almost directly in the front. So this might be more like here. And this light be more. See, this is where I, I want to catch these things now when they're easy. easy to fix before I've rendered everything nicely. And I, this underpainting is dry. This, these layers of acrylic have dried, so it's super easy for me to scrape away things without disturbing this awesome, beautiful texture I've got going on. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. I'm gonna hit it. I think I might do one more little brief layer of, of color and, and stuff on here.
So Mike, is that uh, is that print of the metal arc actually in the metal arc, or is it like at your house or something? lighter on some of these areas. A little lighter behind this trolley. It'll, it'll pick that out of the background nicely. I don't care this is a big giant fumbly brush. It's fine. Um, I like the scratchy kind of quality it gives my paint right now. I have much more refined brushes that I will get to eventually. A little more water so I can wash this on a little better. It's picking the trolley out a little better already. It's at your house. Awesome. some of these shadows. They're still a little too brown for what I want. Let's say blue, green, touch of purple. Just really sort of scratch it on there. Uh, no white. Here. So I'm just going to be really careful about not having any white on your brush because that will go a long way as far as diluting your, your great value that you're trying to set up. Dark up there and sort of dark here, almost like a little vignette. Okay, I think that'll be good once I add the medium to it. Um, what I should do though, I will add a little bit more light here. Because this needs to be a glow. So I need to set that up now. not how I like it. So yeah, I need to set that up now so I can add paint later and it will be extra bright. It's not the most brightest headlight in the world, but a little bit. That's good enough. Um, and then let's do, do I need to do any more for that? Um, let's do just a touch more intense or this green to hit that a little harder. Since that's going to be my brightest spot in the whole painting, I need to establish that now. And I want that to turn. Yeah, that's turning this way. It's not just going straight, it's curving around this way. So this will need to be more straight here. There we go. Okay. 
Okay, looking good. Um, yeah, I'll show you guys just this texture that I'm talking about. If I can do this again without dropping the camera like I did last time, that would be great. So here is this great texture and all these colors in there. There's browns and greens and purples and blues and stuff all poking through here. See if I can get the camera to white balance down a little bit so you can see those. So that's all there. Gonna gonna poke through a little bit here and there out of the painting. And that's what I love. So much interest going on there, you know. So I never ever start with just a white wood panel. I mean that's what of course I start with, but uh, I very quickly add layers of color and texture like this. And I gotta reposition this. There we go. Maybe I can bring this a little closer, even. Sorry about the vertigo action. Just trying to get this centered nicely so you guys can see what I'm doing. Could be a little higher. Huh, this is really hard, actually. I have this really great um, appendage hanging from my ceiling that I can use to mount the camera on instead of just a tripod but it's real touchy to get it exactly stay there it's where i want it well it might be a little crooked that's as good as i can get it okay that's good okay let's really hit this make sure it's super nice and dry I mean, if you look at it from an angle, I can see some like the relief of some damask pattern with the floral print and stuff on it. Well, where I was experimenting with this, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Keep this all wet. Using acrylic paint, all your tools and all your things have to be either wet or clean, or they'll be ruined. Okay. Very nice. Time to switch palettes. Got another palette just for oil. Here we go. Got the old oil palette going. Got all my brushes here. Ready to go. Separate them out a little bit. And now we can get started with the oil portion of this piece, which will be fun. I love these trolley cars. I've done a couple of them. I've done, I've done a couple Milan ones like this before. <coughs> um, done San Francisco and that kind of thing. So, uh, Incidentally, just so everyone knows, uh, first, I'm Christopher Clark. If you haven't seen me before, haven't seen me paint, um, this painting is available for purchase through a Bend Gallery. Um, you can, uh, if you're on one of their social medias, their Instagram or their Facebook, you can just message Dave. He's the art director there, the gallery director. Um, or you can email him at david at abendgallery.com. Uh, or if you go to abendgallery.com, um, there should be a, you can look me up, Christopher Clark, as one of their artists. 
and then you can just uh, this should be the first link on there is the, the, the paint the links to buy this painting and then the France one I did earlier today uh, and then of course we will throw in access to this video so you can watch the whole painting come to life and that will be yours as part of purchasing the painting so that is a unique thing that we offer that you won't get anywhere else having watched the painting come to life you can own it and have it in your home forever and you can watch this video <laughs> and watch me actually painting it so that's a totally unique thing uh, and we can do a time lapse of it as well so you can have both so that's a fun thing that's available uh, if you purchase this um, and also uh, I've recently started a patreon page if you'd like to support me as an artist um, you can go to patreon.com slash amazing art expo uh, so for as little as a buck a month, you can support my artwork. Um, so if you, you know, if that's more in your budget, <laughs> instead of buying an original painting uh, for a buck, you can say, hey, thanks for doing cool artwork. I hope you keep doing it for the rest of your life. And I'll say, thanks, I will. <laughs> um, uh, and then as the, you know, the subscriptions go higher, we have other really cool rewards. Um, like all the way up to... You know, we have discounts on uh, purchasing stuff from our store. Um, and uh, all the way up to the, the highest tier, you can basically get one of my uh, original sketches uh, for free every month. So pretty cool. Okay, gonna start carving in this sky. Go already see little buildings in the distance there. Uh, yeah, Nick posted some links for our Patreon page. So please check that out and subscribe if you'd like to support me as an artist. And then uh, of course, um, this painting is available for sale through a bend gallery. So hit up Dave and he'll uh, take care of you. And then we will include this video so you can watch the whole thing happen again and again and again. Never gets old. Yeah, this will be a quick one. This is a little 9 by 12. So we're doing a whole show of these small little paintings. Um, just because, you know, some people are tight on money right now, but you still want to own a cool original artwork. Well, here you go. We have a whole series of pieces. Uh, I am I believe I'm the first one of the solo shows a band is doing, uh, featuring the small artwork. Um, this is part of the effort to um, create awareness of the show and then to generate some pieces for it as well. <clears throat> so yeah, hit them up if you want to buy this piece right here. Carving out some sky. I love how Europe has these little slivers of sky that you can see through this narrow, <coughs> narrow bit of street alley. This fade into a little more darker of a sky than what's actually in my picture. Uh, again, I'm not trying to recreate the picture at all. I'm trying to interpret the picture. Your painting should be an interpretation, not a duplication. The picture already duplicates the scene for me.
I can see exactly what it looked like. But now I have to interpret it and bring the emotion into it so that you know what it felt like. The camera doesn't feel. The camera just sees with a mechanical eye. And it can be kind of boring sometimes, the way it just captures every freaking detail. And it's so stiff and still, you know. If you want to really see the vibrancy of, of the real life thing, then that's what painting is for. Okay. What now? Here's the edge. Oops, went a little too far with that. It's okay. Here's the edge of this trolley car. Okay, it's even a little. It needs to go a little narrower at the end there to really be true to the perspective. And then let's do a little more green. not too green. Got to be careful about having too much color. And your painting looks like a bowl of Fruit Loops. Looks like it's childish and sweet. Which is fun for some things, but I think not for fine art. <laughs> See, this is going to have a bunch of people in it, so I guess I shouldn't carve that out too much. There's going to be people sort of getting on the train, you know? <clears throat> I could probably go a little further. Yeah, it's looking good. Okay. We're going to want to start doing this trolley, and then I can fill in around it. That might be a good idea. Sure. Okay, this is a fairly light brush. Let's do a much smaller brush. This is going to be a dark, kind of almost green. Let's turn these off for now. Real faded, kind of blue. It still has some mineral spirits on it from when I washed it. Sometimes I just sort of pick out a couple bits and I can fill it in. I need to watch this actually might angle up a little bit because of the perspective. And I need to watch my vertical lines because they always tend to skew to the left like one degree. Let's say this might get a little darker on either side. 
just to show this plane change. It's a little too much. Mm -hmm. And there's a bit of this little window pane you can see there. And it gets much, much darker on this side. Again, a little too far. It's all right. It's looking like a little trolley car already. Look at that. How about that, huh? Sometimes I just kind of poke and dab. Um, it might be a bit brighter. Sort of plain. I gotta scoot over a little bit here. Up on top of this thing. And what I can do here, which is fun. I can sort of show this glowy glow early. Let's do that here too. So every stroke is a decision. come back in here and redefine that a little better. See now it's got a little glow on top of it. Little glowy glow. And let's do uh, there's sort of a yellow front to this thing. Really dark, you know, what is that? A yellowish orange something? Jeez, it's so dark, it's really hard to say. Yellow, green. It's, it's a yellow color, but it's in total shadow, so. Touch more green, maybe. And this plane needs to change. So we've got to plan that out. Can't talk now, whoever that is. <laughs> Does that get darker? Or lighter? I'm gonna say it gets a little darker just so I can have a very distinct plane change. Same thing here, It's but we'll make this one more green. That's too light. Still too light. And that actually, that angle is pretty, pretty decent. 
Okay, let's lighten this up back here. We'll just bring this down a little more. And I'll hit that edge of that that plane change a little better. So you can really see it. And this perspective goes up just a little more. And maybe this comes out a little further. There we go. Uh, yeah, so this is like, you can see how early morning this is. Um, now what I need to do, figure out how to hit this light. So you can carve that out just by erasing some of that paint. I want there to be a little bit of glow around here, not much. I suppose I can use this brush still. go. Now we use a smaller brush for this section in here. Let's say there's going to be a light. It doesn't take the whole it's only like the top half of the light for some reason. And we'll say it gets a little lighter. It's not a super glaring bright headlight, just a little bit. Kind of some fun little light bulb thing. There we go, that's cool. Okay, now I can take, I need a dark, let's start getting into my little tiny guys here. I can put these guys down. Raymond Harold, you're a huge train fan. Oh, awesome. Well, me too. <laughs> Glad you're watching. Yeah, this is a, a trolley in Milan, Italy. So uh, this painting is available for sale through a band gallery. So uh, you can contact Dave there if you want to buy this one. Uh, and then we will include the video that you're watching right now. So you can have this video forever. And you can watch your painting come to life. As a you know collector or a painter, you know, that kind of stuff is you know super valuable. So whatever platform you're watching on, um, you can message Dave there at Abend, or you can email him. It's david at abendgallery.com. And you can buy this painting uh, or the or one I did earlier this morning, the one of France. Two small paintings today. So you can do a clipping stroke where you come back the other other direction and do a stroke. This might go a little longer here because we can see this side of the trolley a little more. There's actually a, another little... Uh, and that is much darker. Yeah, this whole thing is really dark. So many dark values in here, it's really subtle. There's... Some more darks in here. And maybe you can see a little hint of 
light right there. Um, okay, there's a couple of dark spots right here. Maybe they're a little more purple or something. Uh, and then also if uh, you'd like to support me as an artist, um, of course, buying the original is one easy way, but if that's uh, not your thing, or if you just want to do a different kind of support, uh, I just started a Patreon page. Um, so that's uh, patreon.com slash amazingartexpo. So for a buck a month, you can support me as an artist and support my work. Um, and for, you know, we have higher, cooler rewards uh, with, uh, you know, the higher tiers. And, you know, some of them are 5 or $10 a month. You know, you get cool stuff, discounts on the store. Um, access to these videos online forever. And we do slow uh, uh, time-lapse versions of them. And all kinds of cool stuff like that. The highest tier being where you can have, uh, you get one free original sketch of mine every month. So that's pretty cool, right? And here's the dude in here driving. How you doing? Buongiorno. Se tempo fu andare al lavoro. That means it's time to go to work. <laughs> Little guy driving the trolley. Uh, how many paintings do I have that are in process? Um, sometimes, sometimes a few, you know, I try not to have any more than like three or four. Maybe a, a painting is drying and I'm working on other pieces while that one's drying. That's usually the case. Uh, okay. Now it's time for some of these windows. A little bit of this sort of greenish. And there is one door that's open here. Let's do that. There's a door that's open. You know, these little stories like, oh, this is, this person's getting on and they're going to work and here's the guy. And, you know, those little stories really help you figure out what you're doing. I'm kind of good at those little stories. When I was a kid, I played a lot of Legos. That was my game toy of choice when I was a kid was Legos. So I'm used to like, putting together fun little scenes and having little stories with little people and yeah so the doors open people are getting on buongiorno tutto bene si prego grazie tante Allora tu devi andare a casa di me per la cena stasera.
fill in some of this little roof. Cool, and I can do some of these extra nice highlights. Here. There we go. A little fun little trolley. Legos are awesome. <laughs> oh, um, what's the price of an original of this size? Well, you can go to, I don't know what the price is off the top of my head, I forget. Uh, abendgallery.com and you can pull up this exact listing and it'll show you exactly how much this piece is. Uh, abendgallery.com and you can find me, Christopher Clark and uh, this piece will be listed there. And you can purchase it right now if you'd like and we'll include this video so that you can watch this magic again and again and hear me rambling on about whatever garbage I'm rambling on about. Doesn't that sound exciting? Let's see, there's the sidewalk on that side. There's sort of this undercarriage thing. Yeah, see there's suddenly this, it, can, it reveals the train when I paint the space around it. That's pretty fun. I'll go ahead and start the Instagram feed now. And rambling in Italian, right? <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks, you, Raymond. Thank you, Raymond. Uh, hopefully, you get this one. Um, hopefully, I'm glad you enjoy it enough to want to buy it. So, thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to start the Instagram feed. Um, they only have an hour limit on that, so I have to. Okay. Checking connection. And we're live. Okay, hi folks. This is Christopher Clark again. Um, coming to you live with another fun painting. We're doing a, a piece of Italy now. Uh, this is a little uh, trolleyway uh, in Milan. Zooming in a little bit so you guys can see. Um, it's tough you're kind of at an angle so it's you know you're it's a little skewed but it's you know you can see generally what it is so thanks for watching guys I can't glance and look at the comments the whole time because I'm really paying attention to this um, but uh, thanks for tuning in this painting is available for sale um, you can buy it uh, from a bend gallery you can go to a bend and you can look me up, Christopher Clark, that's me. Um, okay, we're going to make, there's a lady getting on here. Maybe she's a little taller. See this, all this detail I just put into the trolley? Well, we're going to blow right through that to make a lady getting on. Maybe she's reaching up. And there's going to be all kinds of people walking around here. I kind of did this in the sketch that I did the other day. Because I don't want to just be a trolley on an empty street. I think there's bustling people happening here. There's a dude there, maybe. You know, there were people all around, all along the sidewalk here. And right now I'm just filling in their silhouette. I can add more to them later. Here's a person back here, maybe walking away or something. There's someone there. So this is a 
this is the place to be right now. This is in Milan. It's early morning. People are going to work. Maybe there's a guy. And they get bigger. Let's say here's a lady. You know, right here. That's way too red. The lady right here. She should be more purple. She's walking away. There's somebody right here. There's a guy right there. And then I can take. I don't have a big dark brush yet. You know, here's this guy right here. And this is where it gets to be fun and abstract. Here's some people back here. And I can add some light, lit planes on them, on the top of their heads, and it'll suddenly bring them out into focus. Here's a lady right here. Maybe she's got some hair. This lady's got some hair. And you don't need a lot of detail. Uh, on the bottom is where you especially, I don't want a lot of detail. Only on the top plane. This guy's got a little shirt. Maybe he's going to, to the office. You know, you need little stories. And he's wearing a little tie. He's got his little tie on. Going to work. Um, this person should be a little darker. Maybe this person has a shirt on. We can see the back of his collar, right like that. This person has a jacket of some kind. See now there's suddenly people, and it's a fun little bustling scene. So. Uh, um, yeah, this painting, you can buy this one right now at a bend. Um, just email david at a bend gallery.com. Or you can go to a bend gallery.com and find me. I'm Christopher Clark. And you can purchase it right there. That's way too white. Here's you see this fun little moment in, in Italy. You know, it's not your typical cheesy, like, Italy romantic landscape with cypress trees and a, and a little, a, you know, a villa. A little more like real life local. Like, it's like if you lived there, this is the kind of stuff that you would see. Like real people walking around doing things. You see like a top plane of the head. Maybe this lady's wearing a red shirt. Buongiorno Lorenzo, maybe it's the bus driver's name is Lorenzo. Buongiorno Lorenzo, come stai? Bene Silvia? E come stai? A tu bene? Tutto bene? Come tu figlio? Oh, gli ha trovato un lavoro bello? E tutto è bene. Come la scuola, la scuola va fantastico. Perché non, non vuoi essere un conduttore di autobus per la vita intera. <ride> 
So yeah, my little stories about my little characters brings the whole thing to life. So Lorenzo is talking to Sylvia and then as she's getting on the bus. And he's like, how's your son? And she's like, oh, he's great. He found work recently. And and she's like, how's school? And he's like, oh, school's great because I don't want to be a bus driver for the rest of my life. And there's suddenly life in the painting. So here's some like train tracks and stuff that you can see on the sidewalk or on, on the street there. Okay, and aside from buying this painting from a bend, uh, you can also support me on Patreon now, as of yesterday. So please go to patreon.com slash amazingartexpo if you'd like to support my work on Patreon. So and for just a buck a month, you could support me and, uh, and all the crew that work with me and everybody and help us keep doing this for many many years we appreciate it and as you subscribe at higher levels there's cooler rewards and stuff like having access to these videos you can have access to them forever and you can study from them and learn from them and you know whatever you'd like to do Super bonus. Okay, and then let's say behind them is this city. It needs to be a little brighter. See, this will help strike out against their silhouettes. And we can see the city in the distance. That needs to be way lighter. I guess now I can start bringing in this city behind them. Awesome. Thank you guys all for watching. Let's say this is a little sort of a yellow building, even though it's in the distance and it's very, I want a little bit of medium here. It's, it's uh, most of this painting is in shadow. There's not a lot of stuff that's lit by light here. I can do a little color. This building is a little more sort of pink, but still very shadowy. Let's say it's like that. A little more, a little more red. And that goes to where about there. Let's see, we can see a little bit of this, a little bit of that, these little bits that are protruding up in the sky there. Maybe there's like a little, hmm, little chimneys and things. Don't need much. Yeah, we'll see there's a little red here, maybe. That's a little too red. 
Maybe there's a red building right there, I guess. Um, and then this one is extra close, but there's some balconies and stuff on there. There's a balcony right there. Okay, there's a lot of more dark things happening here. I want the dark a little lighter than this dark on the trolley. That's my darkest dark is right there. Now I can start adding some of these windows here. Still keeping with my perspective. These ones you don't see much because they're so far away. Clip those off a little bit. And now we're just, I've, I've placed all the big characters, and now I'm just adding details here and there where I want. Here's a little more of this, a uh, couple doorways here. Some little great bits of red poking through that have nothing to do with the painting, but they look so good. <laughs> See, now we got a little environment just springing to life around our little trolley guy. Um, and this building is also a touch, sort of this purplish color in the early morning. I'm going to sort of paint around the windows on this one. And there's a balcony up there with another window. And right on that balcony I can do this. The dark blob it suddenly looks like a balcony. Maybe underneath the windows, there's a couple little sparks of light. Now I can outline this back pane. Back pane. The back window pane. <laughs> that sounded funny for a second. Put some little tiny chimney things here and there. Because you know they'd be there. You know it. So there's a fun little environment. Um, this isn't reading anymore like a glare. Let's make that work right. There we go. I can do a little bit of a sidewalk here, or more maybe. Maybe there's some little poles. With some little points of light on them just for fun. And maybe there's a sign right here.
So now there's a little wall back there with buildings and things, sort of in the distance. Um, oh, David is commenting as well. There's Dave. Hit him up if you want to buy the painting. <laughs> I just noticed him commenting there on Instagram. Um, so, uh, okay. There's that half of the, now I can do, there's a little bit of sidewalk here that's visible through all the people. We can do some details on the ground. Let's say this ground has, I want to really keep this great shadow underneath the trolley car. Let's say there's another little thing there. See, I'm not even going to hardly add any paint here. That's a lot of my underpainting. I'm just going to keep it because it's great. That's why I did it like that, so that I could, you know, have all those darks blend together. There's a couple more. train tracky things. And I can show some ground detail going the other direction that helps give the ground a little bit of substance. This is coming together nicely. Um, again, same thing here. It's mostly a dark shape. There's going to be maybe a couple indications of the, the, the ground through these people. Nothing much, though. I don't need much. They're walking and there's shadows and there's all kind of stuff happening. So much detail without doing anything. <laughs> That's the goal. Is how do you get it to look like it's so detailed? People look at my paintings like, oh, they're so detailed. I'm like, they're not, actually. But that's okay that you think that, because that was intentional. Totally intentional. To make it look like way more detail than it actually was. Just fixing a perspective angle there. Maybe there's a little bit of the street sort of poking through here. And all the way up to the side. I want to reveal the edge of that a little better. This is a little light. <clears throat> That's better. I'm glancing over at the feed so that I can see what this looks like. Um, almost like looking in a mirror. Really helpful. I didn't look at what time it was when I started the Instagram thing, so it, it only lets you do an hour before it cuts off. So if you're watching and it cuts off and I wasn't paying attention, then sorry and thanks for watching. <laughs> um, but uh, again, if you're interested in the painting, you can buy this from Dave at a bend. Um, you can email him at david at a bend gallery.com. The gem and hell kit should taken care of. Um, also, please subscribe to us on Patreon. Um, it's uh, something I just started yesterday. Um, if you want to support me as an artist and uh, help assure that I can do this forever, 
because being an artist is a hard living. Especially now that my art studio is in a fishbowl. Now that the whole world gets to log in and see what I'm doing all day. And I got a million cameras in my house. And it can be, you know, it's tricky. Patreon.com slash Amazing Art Expo. And even for, for as little as a buck a month, you could support me and my artwork and my crew. Okay, there's going to be some signs here. And then, of course, as you, if you do the higher subscription levels, there's cooler rewards. You'll have access to all these videos. So you can watch these at any time. And um, uh, the higher, the highest level subscriptions, you basically get a uh, one uh, free one of my uh, original sketches every month, which is pretty awesome. I know Nick. Oh yeah, I was gonna say yeah. Post the link for the original, so you can buy the original painting, so people can see that. Here's a little bit of reflected light, and that's way too bright for some of these here. This could be a touch brighter. This is going to be a sign right here of some kind. We don't know what this is, but let's say it's a sign. It's a sign. I need to fill this in then. Well, this thing's coming along nicely. Holding it on there, and it's going to say something. What is it going to say? I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be red. Something else to mimic the sort of people down here, so they're not the only red things in the whole thing. There's a sign, and it's going to have writing on it. doesn't matter what it says can't read it anyway. There we go. It says something cool. I'm sure it's a tasty place to eat. It's not open yet though. Ancora troppo presto. Può essere aperto. Ancora è chiuso perché è troppo presto la mattina. And there's a few more. Let's say there's another sign right here. It's all kinds of little signs and things. Maybe one of these signs is just a little tiny bit lit up. There's a sign that's a little tiny lit up. That's fun. And then here's one too. Maybe back here it is. Maybe this guy's lit up. So now we have a whole sidewalk full of signs. I'm sorry, you know, that's the side of the building. Sun, sun everywhere, sun. Dun, 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 breaking my mind. 
do this, don't do that, can't you read the sign? Who did that song? It's Tesla, right? Put a little more light on some of these people here. And we'll put some sort of lights like there's some cars in the distance or something. Because there there are. Can you show the reference photo? Sure. Um, well, I can do it on... Uh, here's my reference photo. You know, it's all right. It's not really that impressive. Um, really, it's a good idea. But if I, if I duplicated that, it would be really boring. So what I have to do is take that to a whole nother level and interpret it how I want it. Group the values together differently. Add some more motion. Add way more people. You know, I took that painting, I took that picture as quick as I could so I wouldn't get run over by the, the trolley as it started moving again. Um, I didn't have, you know, you don't always, you know you never get the perfect reference photo. It's always lacking. Your idea of what it felt like is always going to be way better than the picture that you took. There's a couple. Yeah, we'll put some of those tracks behind it, and I can. Uh, let's see. What do I want to do that? can push these here because I came a little too far. Um, yeah, this painting might be almost done. <clears throat> oh, Matt, every time you come back. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Um, yeah, hit up David at Bend and you can own this painting. And... Uh, please subscribe to my Patreon at uh, patreon.com slash amazingartexpo. And I'm Christopher Clark. You can follow me personally if you want to watch more of my work. Um, in general, um, my, all my social medias are um, Christopher Clark Art for Instagram and Facebook. Let's see, there's a circle right here. I don't know what it is, but maybe it says something. It's like a sign. Who knows what it says? It's a logo of some kind. So, okay. Um, I might want to start calling this one just about done. Can push this up to make a perspective a little more accurate. Um, <clears throat> fun finishing touch. Gotta get the old respirator on. I always wear this thing. This is why you suddenly can't hear me talking. So I don't breathe in any of this shit. Because, you know, it's poisonous. <laughs> You don't want to breathe in cadmium or cobalt stannate. So I can do a little bit of sort of misty, handy splattery quality stuff to push some of those buildings back, some of these people. Push them around a little bit if it's a little too much. I can do a little up here to make this glow a little cooler. 
If I don't like it, I can sort of smush it away. I'm going to do a touch of glow right there for because I want to. And right there. And let's do this headlight a little bit. Make sure I wash off all the mineral spirits. Too much mineral spirits on this and I'll eat right through the paint that I'm just putting on. Let's do a little bit of this. Let's make it a little darker. A little more orange. Can add a little glow quality to it. Real subtle. Maybe I can even put a little bit down here to sort of show a reflection on the ground. And I can't answer the phone when I'm streaming. <laughs> Touch a little more light there. sign this one thanks Matt thanks for watching um, yeah I'll sign this one we'll call it done and uh, Insta Instagram might have I don't know 15 minutes left more maybe I wasn't watching when I started but uh, you guys feel free to ask me some questions now that I'm just doing the signature on this uh, and then I'll be cleaning up my brushes and stuff so I can look over and, and answer some questions so questions, if you'd like, go ahead and comment on those, and I'll answer them. Uh, and this painting is, uh, as far as I know, still available. So hit up Dave at a bend, and he'll get you taken care of. And uh, please subscribe to our new Patreon. That's uh, It's patreon.com slash amazingartexpo. And I uh, really appreciate your support there. And if you want to follow me on social media personally, it's uh, Christopher Clark Art for all the social medias. Instagram, Facebook, and everything else. Okay, it can be a little lighter because there's a lot of textury stuff happening down there. So any questions, please uh, ask. I'm actually looking at the comments now. I wasn't always able to before. Gilbert Francois says, Magnifique. Uh, merci beaucoup, mon cher ami. Uh, où est-ce que tu vois uh, mon tableau, mon peintre aujourd'hui? Is it in France or Canada or who? Christopher Clark. Has so many letters in my name. And I like it to be legible. So if people could see this painting somewhere and said, oh, who painted that? And they walk up and they can read it. I'm a big believer in legible signatures that are designed really cool. Okay, great. 
What kind of surface are you working on? Uh, this is a wood panel. It's a um, quarter inch plywood that uh, I treat and gesso myself um, so I can put my own texture on it. Um, let's put it right there. So it's textured the way I want it. Uh, and the texture adds quite a lot to the painting itself. Um, let's see, I can move the Instagram feed a little closer now. Um, let's get this out of the way. So now it's a little more square, so you guys can see what it actually looks like. There we go. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay, you guys are looking at it at an angle. Um, so yeah, I build my own wood panels. <clears throat> Um, I, uh, been doing that for a few years now. Um, I used to paint on canvas like everybody else, but then I got tired of the, the stretchy sort of trampoline-y kind of surface of a, of a, of a canvas. And I don't, I decided I don't want the canvas texture anymore. Um, so I sort of built him on wood panel. So that's a rigid surface. And it's a lot of the tools that I use that I've made myself. Um, don't work on a canvas. They, I need that flat, rigid surface. Um, and the the when I gesso the the panels myself, gesso is the the white primer. That's like the um, the 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 first coat to, that seals and and sort of sizes the surface. It seals all the pores and and everything, and and it makes it that white, bright white surface. You ever buy a white canvas in the store? It's it, it's gessoed. You know that's what that's what it is. Um, someone asked on Facebook if they could see a reference photo. Okay. Um, big love from Abu Dhabi. Awesome. So, okay, I can't, I'm going to sort of look over the phone here. So there's the reference photo. Um, I can zoom back a little bit. Um, not super exciting. It's cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a photo of Italy. Sure. But the, you know, it's not, I wouldn't buy that and hang it on my wall. It's kind of cool looking, but, um, I, added more people and changed the light. Get out of my big old fat head is in front of the other camera here. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I can take that and then turn it into that, which I think is a lot more interesting, has a lot more movement and light and more people and I can move things around and, you know, do whatever I want. Um, I think you guys are maybe getting a little bit of glare from the, there's, a, there's a window back here. It's hard to position cameras and stuff so they're perfectly glare free um, but you get the idea in general so uh, <clears throat> let's see um, yeah please uh, hit up Dave at a bend if you guys are interested in this painting um, I can clean up some stuff here if you guys want to ask me any other questions um, this painting is available at abendgallery.com. Just look for me, Christopher Clark, and this link should be the first thing listed there. Or if you're watching on any of the social medias, you can just message Dave right now. Um, he is clearly watching because he's commenting. <laughs> um, and then if you want to follow me personally online, I'm Christopher Clark. Uh, Christopher Clark Art is my... Uh, Instagram and Facebook so please follow me there uh, please subscribe to our new patreon that's um, patreon.com slash amazing art expo and uh, we have some cool rewards for different levels of, of subscribing and we just appreciate your support so we can keep doing this forever so thank you guys all so much for watching it's very difficult painting in general, let alone doing it under a microscope like this <laughs> with all these cameras coming in all different directions, streaming to like, I don't know how many services we're streaming to. Um, but uh, I got several different cameras streaming. I was like, is my Wi-Fi going to blow up? Because I've got all these streams happening. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you guys for supporting us. And please hit up the gallery if you want to buy this one or the other one I did this morning. Oh, I guess I can show that one for anyone who missed it. Let me grab it real quick. Mm -hmm. 
Here's the other one I did this morning. This one is uh, of a little town called Annecy, France. So here's this one. Uh, whoa, there we go. I'm trying to get it to look straight on all the cameras I have here. Um, so I did this this morning. This one's also available at a bend. I'm basically doing a lot of these to um, Dave at a bend. And then this one, of course, I just did right now. You guys watched that happen. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I just, uh, I shared the reference. I can point the camera here again. Um, here's my, you know, regular old picture I took with my phone walking around. You know, it's, it's nothing to write home about. Mission to do a Lord of the Rings painting. Um, and, uh, the gal gave me some ideas. Like, oh, here's a few ideas that I'd like to see. And I'm like... She gave me four ideas. I'm like, those are all amazing. So I'm like, how about I just do, I'm going to do all four pieces. Um, she's going to kind of get first dibs on the one that she wants as a commission. And then, big next. Uh, interspersed with uh, one or two of my own pieces and probably a few more like this, these uh, these small sort of scenes for a bend. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you want to see those happen, um, just follow us on whatever streaming service you're watching, uh, and on, on social media, Christopher Clark art, um, and you'll see those things happen. And of course, more of these, if you follow Dave at, uh, the Bend Gallery. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about those Lord of the Rings pieces. Um, we're doing, uh, I'm doing a scene of... Um, let's see, what are the four, the four scenes? One is, is uh, Aragorn's coronation at, um, God, now my brain is like blanking on like, I'm so focused on like visual things in Italy and um, it's Minas Tirith. So they're going to show Minas Tirith with Aragorn, the coronation somehow, you know, figure that one out. Uh, another one we're going to do, Minas Tirith, that's under attack from the legions of orcs and such with Gondor, like, on the ridge in the distance with the sun rising. So you'll see that whole thing. That'll be an awesome, grandiose battle scene. Um, and then one of the, the, the Fellowship leaving either Lothlorien or, you know, the woods of Lorien or Rivendell. I did a painting of Rivendell a while ago with, with Frodo standing there, so I might do, I don't need to do another Rivendell painting. I might do them leaving the woods of Lorien um, just to have a different environment. That'll be fun. Um, you know, they'll probably be in their boats, like, paddling off with the light. Oh, the light's going to be great in that one. Um, and uh, then I will do, the last one is the scene, the moment when... When Frodo and Sam are, are in Mordor, about to reach the, 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 the Mount Doom, and Frodo can't walk anymore, and so Sam picks him up and carries him. So it's that scene where, you know, I can't carry it, but I can carry you. And it's going to be that great scene. with And, I'm, you know, I can do some really cool stuff with the light in the background of that one. And have some, like, Nazgul floating around or somewhere, and maybe have Gollum, like, you know like sneaking up about in the background like that'll be a fun one too so four really great really tough lord of the rings paintings that i'm about to work on tom bombadil <laughs> they actually asked for for tom bombadil also but that wasn't really one of their one of their four main serious com I, it's just a strange character but he's really funny um you know this funny weird bumbly forest guy and is like you know super gorgeous like mega forest nymph wife you know living in this house all by themselves um i, I don't understand that <laughs> he's such a strange funny little guy um i guess i'll need to do him as well so yeah please follow me on all the things um if you want to watch those things happen yeah the supreme deity right uh hi there herb from texas thanks for watching um, you're catching us at the tail end of this whole bit. Um, here's this Milan painting I did right now. 
Here's the one from I did of France earlier this morning. Both available at a band gallery. A band is A B E N D. Um, and uh, the, the scroll up in the oh, I guess you, if you're you, if you're new on the stream, you haven't seen the chat. Um, we'll post the link again to buy the originals. Um, and then just uh, I'll I'll put links on my social media as well. So you know follow me at Christopher Clark Art is Facebook and Instagram. Um, and uh, I'll post links there as well. Uh, as one bowl, <laughs> not Constantinople, right? <laughs> um, that's funny. I should do Gandalf riding Gwai here the Eagle. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah, there's so many great... I, Lord of the Rings is something I barely scratched the surface of. Uh, I guess I can move this back so you guys can actually see me talking now. As it hooks on to everything... Oh my god, yeah, this is so difficult to do with so many cameras. Um, and so many different things happening. Here's a cable hanging down. My, my house is like the Matrix with like all these wires hanging down from the ceiling and like shit everywhere. It's, it's kind of nuts. Um, there we go. So I can't get this thing to stay at an angle close enough. <laughs> so hard. Okay. So thanks guys for watching. Uh, I guess I can sign off here. I'll look at the Instagram thing as well. So, um, so uh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, so thanks guys for watching. I'm Christopher Clark, um, and uh, we'll uh, hopefully see you guys next time. Follow us so you can see all the things that are coming your way. So uh, okay, take care guys. There's ending Instagram, sharing to story. Okay, and I will say goodbye to everyone else on all the other streaming things. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.